become things invest. We'll talk about investing, finance, and professional development for today's in terms only. The investment we're going to talk today will be Tim Tiki T H. It's my second posting of today. With respect to recording time of two twenty eight p.m. on the Eastern time, the Tim can trade four thousand four hundred eighty six dollars, up about five point zero three percent so far. As you can see clearly, again on the left side of the house, um, with respect to overall crypto market, is relatively green today, right? With Bitcoin up about th two. 2.79%, Ethereum leading the effort up about 5%, while all the other altcoins are all, you know, surging respectively, obviously from the positive news that we've been experiencing earlier this morning. And I would say, you know, as the day, you know, passes by, um, is already, you know, almost over mid, like 60% of the day is basically done now, right? It's 2 p.m. on Eastern time. Um, for me on the Eastern time on, on people on the East Coast, obviously. Uh, in the last couple of hours so far, beside the news that we already talked about earlier this morning, there are only two news that really popped up. So we're going to go dive into technicals in a relatively short manner from here. So the first one on Bazinga about eight hour, eight minutes ago, talk about CryptoPunk 4613 sold for 275 million, 275 Ethereum today. And this is a picture of um, a, a like a ghostly person, and why I say it's ghostly, it's not a white person. It's just a completely paper white looking person wearing like these um, Ray Ban Wayfarer sunglasses, I guess, uh, with like long slash shortish hair uh, with like a blue background. And it's like a blue tinted grayish background. And it sold for 275 Ethereum today. Interesting. And then the other one is talk about with respect to the option expiry uh, that's expected to happen soon on Friday, obviously. Ethereum bulls will likely profit collectively about $130 million on Ethereum options. Obviously, be, you know, besides, you know, um, and I would say despite, uh, that's more correct verbiage. The sell-off we've been experiencing so far, but because of the surge that we're seeing on the preliminary perspective right now, we are up about 5.25%. Seems like the bulls um, are going to capture that option expiry tomorrow. So that would technically translate into approximately $130 million of profit collected by the bulls. Right, and then the last news that I see here is on Barron's again with respect to the uh, India's crypto ban, which is still non-confirmatory. Um, so it's something we will watch and observe going forward to see how that will progress going forward from here. So on the news front, that's pretty much it. Let's go to the technicals right now. Um, as you know, today is Thanksgiving, so I don't. It's not a really uh, you know, weird experience that you know we don't see a lot of media affectation happening today. You know, the bulk of it basically are done in the early in the morning, which was already a surprise. You know, I guess a lot of publication company won't just like get it out the way. Um, to you know create some stir in the market and surprisingly all of them has been positive this morning um, both on obviously driven by macro affectation but also with respect to their specific biases as well right so interesting to see the activities among publication companies today uh, and obviously uh, you know I don't foresee any more news popping up until like probably Friday tomorrow morning uh, unless there's like any specific international news that pops up uh, later today, right? But I don't foresee that to be happening. Makes sense. Today's a holiday in the U.S., right? So with respect to Ethereum up about 5.13%, uh, we are still in the formation of looking into making this into a cup and handle. But at the moment right now, this is non-confirmatory. So a cup and handle technically will require you to form a handle to begin with, right? So right now we're looking like we're forming a cup. Right, but for the cup to complete its way, we need to have this green candle slowly surge up all to all the way to match with the all-time high all over again. Right, as we get there, we'll see a slight dip. Right, and once we have that slight dip, that will be the handle. Right, think of a cup. Right, you're not gonna have a cup that's one side higher than the other. Right, so the cup and handle, um, that you know, in a bullish perspective, needs for this green candle. Or the subsequent green candles to match with the previous all-time high first. So technically, why I keep saying it's non-confirmatory because this the pattern is not completed yet, right? So if we are able to confirm, you know, and I would say this is possible, right? Very possible based on how we're stitching the story right now. And and follow me step by step, okay? 
I foresee that because of the fact that we are still at a relatively um, neutral level, we're not oversold, we're not overbuy, I think we might see some sell-off and normalize a little bit because we do have a lot of consolidation and can further flatten it out. So I think we're going to have an elongated escalation going forward. So today's surge might be normalized tomorrow or until the weekend. And then, but it will still be a progressive upward trend, right? And eventually, you know, uh, it's just a matter of time, right? As we elongate this, you know, duration of graduation, you will incur um, a depletion, you know, which is a gradual depletion on the RSI scale. But eventually, the green surge, the green candle is going to match with the all-time high all over again, right? But it's not going to be a one green candle, but if we do, that will be amazing. But I think that's how it will logically play out. we we'll probably see some red candle, like a really meany one, and then subsequent days we're going to see a continuation of a green candle, right? And as the green candle matches, um, we will be back to, I would foresee, if we're going to normalize in the subsequent days, we will come back into the normal zone on the RSI scale because that will technically translate into the normalization combined with the upward momentum. So net nets kind of cancel out each other. That will allow us to get back to the all-time high all over again. right? And as we get to the all-time high, because of the MACD on the momentum perspective, will also match together. right? And with that affectation, you will technically form a golden cross. And as you form that golden cross, at the same time matching with this pattern of, let's say, like hypothetically, right, you're going to keep zigzagging, zigzagging up and down all the way to the peak around like, let's say, around like early December or mid-December, depending on how elongated the line will be, that will form the completion of the cup. Right. And as we get there, you're going to see that, you know, the RSI is going to be a little bit of a um, stretch up to like the 65 or 60. Right. And by then you will see probably a normalization again. Right. A slight dip. Right. To just to cool back down into more of a normalized zone around like the 50s again. Right. And with that being said, that will complete the handle when you have that cup and handle. And once you have that complete cup, which we still don't have a complete cup yet, you, you don't drink from a cup that's sideways, like slanted, right? Like you still get a cup in front of you. You don't see the cup like one side of shape. You need, you need to still have the handle in front of you, right? You know what I'm trying to say? So match with this chart in front of you, I think maybe this side makes more sense, right? You need to form that handle. We do not have that handle yet. So you need to wait for that handle to complete Right, which will be a slight dip first, and then it will search up from there in the technical perspective. So that's what a cup and handle in a bullish perspective is. A negative cup and handle will be something like we're seeing right now. Right? If we do not sustain to go back to the all the way up, right? That's basically just a downward trend in a in the bearish cup and handle, if you may. So hopefully this is helpful. The pattern is not that confirmatory yet, right? We're not completed. The chart is not even finished yet. Uh, but we will keep an eye out on based on how it's going to be progressing going forward, right? So Bitcoin right now is up about 3%. Uh, I would say the cup and handle is even more uh, stretched in comparison to Ethereum because like, technically, again, right, you need to complete the handle and the cup shape. We don't even have it yet. So we have to watch. Uh, but right now in the risk mitigation perspective, again, right, the level to dollar cost average is still somewhere around like the 53 to the 47 right which is the frame that we've identified so far and i think right now it's not a terrible level to incur risk because this is uh forming us you know a relatively good platform but nothing confirmatory at the moment right now right so i would say in terms of like which one is more bullish ethereum is a little bit more bullish in comparison to bitcoin because of the elongated level uh, that we need to incur also at the same time because of the fact that we need to complete the cup for us to even have a cup and handle formation to begin with, right? So right now it just looks more like a slanted type of um, head and shoulder type pattern. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, Dogecoin with respect to current level right now, dollar cost average somewhere around like the 21 to the 1950 again, right? Uh, Cardano is reviving because, not because of Cardano specifically, it's because of the rebound from the technicals front on our side perspective, but also because of the fact that, you know, um, this is a relatively good resistance level based on historicals, right? We were at the 170 before, before we cracked down. We got to the 158, 
which was technically an uh, extreme over soul level, so that's why we're reviving right now. But again, right, the real level is at somewhere around like the 145 per the technicals, right? Solana's up right now because Solana's tr basically dragged up by the key coins, not because of Solana by itself. We're still in the bearish state right now, so I would say, you know, we're still leaning downward despite the up right now. So I would buy it one, somewhere around 133 to 113 from here. XRP is at 105 right now, so basically anywhere from like the 101 to 105 is still a good level. We're just basically ping-ponging up and down a, around this area. So we are at the upper echelon of that frame that we talked about, so I think maybe wait until tomorrow or the subsequent days until... Uh, you know, as we go back to the 101, I think that could be a logical dip from here. Polka dots, um, again, like anywhere from 33 all the way to 25 is still the dip from here. Algorand is at the uh, five up about up, up close to six percent right now. Um, so, and the level that we at right now, it's um basically we do have a relatively substantive of a um resistance right of breaking above uh, to two dollars. And I think right now it's not a terrible idea to incur some risk as well because we are slowly forming a golden cross. You can see that we're reversing up right now. Um, we are at the 50, so it's not the best, not the worst either. So it's okay, it's neutral. So I think again, right, 160 to 152 is still the dip, right? Shiba Inu is, uh, is surging right now, not because of Shiba Inu itself. It's because of the overall market is um, you know driving up. Shiba Inu and Shiba Inu is a low price entry, so it's less price sensitive. That's why it's a more volatile. So that's why it's up about fourteen percent right now. Um, at the moment right now, I would probably weigh off because again, right, the twos like the anywhere around like the two thousand eight hundred to the nine hundred is still the frame that I would be incurring risk right now. It's still uh unconfirmatory because technically we're just levitating without any substance. Be you know. At below from the from the current level that we're in front of us right now. So these are risk management levels. Uh, basically, before I do that, let's go to some Black Friday shopping. I was uh, looking into uh, some Black Friday sales, which I see that's all over uh, the webs right now. So I spend like a bulk of my day just not doing anything besides just shopping. So I actually bought these early today. I've been looking into this brand, uh, Own Please is a Miyaki, and this is like um, nice trousers I've been looking for. And uh, for for those that don't know, I actually really like brown color. This is like my favorite color recently for some reason. Um, I you know I don't know why, but I just like it a lot, especially this color. So I actually got it my size. My size is like a thirty two. So um, so I got lucky, and it's like fifty percent off. So this is one of the sales that I'm that I actually bought early today. And then this other one that I bought, or I'm planning on buying actually, but it's still very expensive. As you can see, despite being like close to 40% off, um, it's just like a uh, product coat. Um, it's like a satin coat. And I really look like a wizard wearing this, <laughs> but it's something that I, I, I do think I need in my closet. I don't have a black um, satin coat or like a rain coat if you may. And it has like some down feeling as well, uh, but it's pretty expensive. But um, I think this could be a good stable piece uh, for me to wear for a long time. Like as assuming I live until like I'm 70, I could still be wearing this um, looking like Dumbledore, I guess. But uh, I think this is um, a pretty nice one. It's got like that's like a really subtle feature on the back, but I don't know. Let me know what you think about this, right? And then also like I'm thinking about like maybe buying this on Zara. I do need some like winter boots coming. Uh, now you can see that's forty percent off, starting at six p.m. Eastern time. So I do have a timer on my clock, so I might be buying a. And I'm a size eleven, um, true to size. So maybe, maybe I, I maybe I might pull the trigger on this like for ninety bucks. It seems like it's pretty well made, but if it doesn't, I'll just probably return it. And I also looked at other like websites like Essence, you know, like Neighbor. Uh, I I don't know if you have ever checked out this website before. Try Bien, uh, Wu Store at Berlin, Haven, um, and also like No Tray and and clothing as well and Match Fashion, which is already something we talked about, and MrPorter.com. So I've been looking into it. Like you know, I think typically people would be shopping for like electronics and stuff like that. But I'm actually uh, looking to like build up my wardrobe a little bit more. I I feel like I'm kind of wearing the same thing all the time. I'm looking for like stable, durable pieces right now. So um, if you guys see any deals, by the way, on Black Friday, uh, please send them my way. I, I'm, I am looking into um, 
investing into some durable pieces, not just like because it's uh, a, a TV is cheap, so I'm buying a TV or, or or something like that. I just I'm looking for something that uh, you guys find to be a good deal. Um, so let me know, right? Um, and sorry for going off topic. So with respect to risk management levels, these are the levels that we we'll identify here based on the technicals that we just talked about. Um, yeah, and if you take a snapshot of this picture, uh, these are levels that as we deplete to RSI below 35, as we deplete back to the prelim golden cross. So it seems like the cup and handle versus the head and shoulder pattern is still to be determined based on the current level. So nothing confirmatory yet, right? So I'll keep an eye out on it. I'll keep you guys updated on it. And let me know if you have any questions as well. Hope you guys have a great rest of the Thanksgiving and let me know any deals again on Black Friday. I look forward to seeing so. And take care and watch out for the next video come up. Take care.